Which newspaper on November 3rd, 1946? 36. He knew being the other. You are right, the same point. Here's the reason. You got them all, one, two, and three. Very quickly, teams, how many legs? Does a ball tie it up and we have about two minutes to play. And at the end of our round, an interesting round it was indeed. New Hampshire Public Television is proud to present Granite State Challenge. Major funding for Granite State Challenge was provided by the New Hampshire Lottery, celebrating 30 years and $300 million to education in the Granite State. Additional funding was provided by Public Service of New Hampshire, energy specialists for homes and businesses throughout the state, supporting high quality educational programming for viewers of all ages. Digital Equipment Corporation, where we believe a commitment to education is an investment in the future everyone's future. And Lockheed Sanders, who proudly supports New Hampshire Public Television's educational programs on behalf of its employees and the community. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Janon, and welcome to another game on Granite State Challenge. About halfway through our second round of play, three teams have already qualified for our quarterfinals coming up a little bit later on this spring. We have two schools ready to do battle tonight, the winner also to move on into that quarterfinal round. Let's show you where the two teams are from for tonight's second round game. We have the Rams of Raymond High School. They are from the town of Raymond, located in the southern portion of the Granite State. The team is Raymond High School. Let's meet the players. Hi, I'm Ed Boudreaux and I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Scott Smallwood and I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Kyle Adet and I'm a junior. Hi, I'm Eric Oster and I'm a junior. With us also for the program this evening, the coach of the team, Euphemia Scantlin. The alternates are Heather Davis and James White and they are the Rams of Raymond High School. All right, now let us introduce you to their opponents for tonight's second round game. They are the Owls of Timberlane High School from the town of Plastow in the southeastern portion of the Granite State. The team Timberlane High School, let's meet the players. Hi, I'm Peter Cobb and I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Jeremy Grasick and I'm a junior. Hi, I'm Nisha Bhatia and I'm a junior. Hi, I'm Barlow and I'm a senior. With us also for the program, the coach of the team, she is Ann Reardon. The alternates are Ailey Byers and Luke Hart, the Owls of Timberlane High School. One more introduction just before we head on into our first round. That's to let you know who the judges will be for tonight's game. And they are Dan Moynihan of the Spalding High School of Rochester on the right and Michael Sands of St. Thomas Aquinas High School of Dover on the left. They are our judges for tonight's game. So here we go into round number one. This is a 10-point toss-up round. We'll have a bonus round, a 60-second round we'll tell you all about later. But Raymond Timberlane, you each have one win under your belt. Good luck to win it tonight into our quarterfinals. For 10 points, name the only one of the nine planets in our solar system not named for a Greek or Roman god, Eric of Raymond. Earth. Earth is correct for your 10 points. For 10 points, which island did American colonial governor Peter Minuet purchase from the Indians in 16 Peter of a Timberlane? Manhattan. Manhattan Island is absolutely right for about 24 bucks. That's the way it should be. First two questions, you each are on the scoreboard, and here we go with a 10-point toss-up. What number is the additive identity for all real numbers? <coughs> Jeremy of a Timberlane. One. Raymond. Ed? Zero. Is correct. Zero is right for the 10 points. What's that? <laughs> for 10 points, we want you now to tell us the name given to a maneuver invented by a doctor for dislodging Peter of Timberlane. Heimlich. Heimlich maneuver is right. Dislodging an object stuck in a windpipe. Good anticipation, and we have another 10 point toss up. Identify the New York gateway to the New World, whose National Museum. Burr of Timberlane. Ellis Island. Ellis Island is right. The of Immigrants opened in 1990. <laughs> On which date and year, known as D-Day, did the Allies invade Normandy in World War II? <laughs> We're looking for June 6th of 1944. June 6th of 1944. For the first time tonight, let's take a look at the monitor here in the studio and name this beleaguered chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. He is 
Dan Rostenkowski. Dan Rostenkowski, here's another 10-point toss-up for you. Give the title of the Robert Frost poem that includes the line, I took the one less traveled by. Edward of Raymond. Two roads diverged in wood. Timberlane. Peter? The road not taken. The road not taken is correct for your 10 points. Well done, and here's another 10-point toss-up about halfway through our first round. Identify the space vehicle launched by the Soviets on October, uh, Edward of Raymond. Sputnik. Is right, October 4th, 1957. <laughs> if you feel you need it, you have paper and a pen in front of you. An angle measures 40 degrees more than its complement. Find the measures of both angles. Edward of Raymond. Um. Timberlane, Jeremy. 40 and 50. We're looking for 65 and a 25. 65 and 25 degrees. Another 10-point toss-up for you. Name the two points on the Earth's surface where six months of darkness have followed Peter of Timberlane. North Pole and South Pole. You got it. Six months of daylight, six months of darkness. Another 10-pointer. Which treaty did the U.S. Senate fail to ratify on November 19, 1919, thus dashing President Wilson's hope for American leadership in post-World War I? Peter of Timberlane. Treaty of Versailles. You have another 10 points for the Owls. Very quickly, teams, who published Poor Richard's Almanac? We have Eric of Raymond. Ben Franklin. Benjamin Franklin is right. Listen carefully now. When combined, the postal abbreviations of which two U.S. states spell the word cook? Burr of Timberland. Uh, Colorado and Oklahoma. Colorado and Oklahoma is right for 10 points. Another 10-pointer for your name, the only marsupial native to North America. Edward of Raymond. The opossum. Is right. The opossum is right. We're down to three minutes or so to play in our first round. Let's listen to the following speech. I should say this, that Pat doesn't have a mink coat, but she does have a respectable Republican. Burr of Timberline. Club. Nixon. Want to continue the sound, or do we want to ask for the question? What coat? And I always tell her that she'd look good in anything. Raymond? Oh, I'm sorry, I can ask the question, sure. Let me ask the question. By what name is this 1952 Richard Nixon speech known? Eric. The Rose Garden Address? It is the Checkers speech. The Checkers speech. All right, we got through that. Let's go on with another 10-pointer. Does the word obfuscate mean to prohibit, delete, scold, or confuse? Nisha of Timberlane. To confuse. Is right for your 10 points. For another 10-pointer, identify the long, dormant Japanese volcano, which is its highest peak. Eric of Raymond. Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji for another 10 points for the Rams. In stories about which legendary king does the mysterious Morgan Le Fay appear? Eric of Raymond. King Arthur. King Arthur again for another 10 points. All right, we're down to our final minute of our first round. Which British leader said... I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears. Eric of Raymond. Winston Churchill. He did. Blood, toil, tears, and sweat. <laughs> what name is given to the form of precipitation containing high concentration of acid? Uh, Jeremy of Timberland. Acid rain. Acid rain, simple enough. <laughs> name the only woman who was both a first lady and the mother of a U.S. president. Burr of Timberland. Uh, Abigail Adams. Abigail Adams is right for your 10 points. Well done, and here's another 10 point. You may want pen and paper for this particular question as well. If the area of a circle is 12 square feet, what is the area of a sector of the circle with a central angle of 60 degrees? Jeremy of Timberland. Three, Three square feet. Raymond Edward. Two square feet? Is right. Two square feet is correct for your 10 points. And there is the whistle ending our first round, and tremendous first round. After one round of play, Timberlane holding on to a slim lead, 100 to 90 after our first round. 
Well, let's go over here. Maybe I can look up on the notes of Edwards and see how he came up with that two square feet. <laughs> there they go. That's how you did it. Huh? Well, that's pretty good. You did it. <laughs> Edward, Scott, Kyle, and Eric, team from Raymond. What do you think? Second time around, uh, got things going pretty good? Yep. yep. So it's a little, little, a little easier the second time. First time, yeah. everybody seems to come in here and they get stunned by the lights a little bit. But uh, they're hot. A little more, they're hot. <laughs> little more relaxed. Hot. What about practice? Do we have a practice, uh, guys, uh, since game number one? Oh, yeah. We, we had a practice. Just you we had a practice just last <laughs> night. <laughs> just last night, Just huh? last night. Well, that's yeah. good. Well, it all seems to be working. You're right in the hunt. We're ready to go through with a big charge right through to the end. Yep. yep. Ready to get into the quarterfinals. Yep. I don't have anything else there for you to see except for me to say it's the team from <laughs> Raymond High <I'm> School. <laughs> all right, let's head into our second round. Our second round being our bonus round. We'll ask the alternates to work on up and join up with their teams. As they do that, we'll remind you as we do each week that we have 10-point toss-up questions remaining, but the team that identifies the toss-up correctly has a chance at additional bonus points. In addition, they have their alternates with them, so everybody ready to play here in round number two. Very good first round, teams. This is a 10-point toss-up for those of you with your hands on the buzzer. Listen to this brief piece of music and then tell me its title. Shame. Give my regards to Broadway. Here we go for another 10-pointer. Correct the grammatical error in the following sentence. The candy was divided between the 10 of them. <coughs> Nisha of Timberlane. It should be the candy was divided between the 10 of us. Raymond Scott. The candy was divided among the 10 of us. Uh, the among corrects the between, and that is correct. That's what we're going to take. We're not worried about the us. We're looking for the between and the among. So there's your 10 points. We'll come over to uh, Raymond. Edward, you have everybody up there. You can choose from the categories of all's fair, real numbers, or the letter G. All's fair, real numbers, or the letter G. Real numbers. Real numbers it will be. Okay, Ed, you can talk to everybody up there. Take your answer as the team answer for five points apiece. Answer each of the following mathematical questions about real numbers. What is the multiplicative inverse of one-fourth? Four. Four. Is correct. What is the additive inverse of negative seven? Seven. Seven. Correct. What is the identity element of multiplication? One. Fifteen out of fifteen on the bonus. All right, here's another ten-point toss-up question for you. For ten points, identify the British dependency that occupies 2.3 square miles and is a huge limestone mass. It is located on a peninsula at the entrance to the Mediterranean Sea. Edward of Raymond. Gibraltar. Correct for another ten points. <laughs> Back to you, Rams, for all's fair. Letter G, Africa. The letter G. Letter G, it will be. Identify the following, each of which begins with the letter G. Famous knot cut by Alexander the Great with Gordian his sword. Knot. Gordian knot. The Gordian knot. Correct. Most common kind of sugar occurring in plant Granular. and animal Granular. tissues. Granular. Glucose. Glucose is correct. Common term for a microorganism that causes disease. Germ. Germ. Correct. 15 out of 15 on the bonus. All right, we are ready for another 10 point. It was still three minutes to play in this round. Name President Richard Nixon's national security advisor who won the Nobel Peace Prize for negotiating a ceasefire in Vietnam. Uh, Eric of Raymond. Henry Kissinger. Correct for another 10 points. All right, we come back to you, Rams. We have all sphere, Africa or stars? Africa. Africa, it will be. Very simply, there are three African countries whose names begin with the letter Z. Name them. Zaire, Zimbabwe. 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 Zambia. 15 out of 15 on the bonus. All right, here's another 10-point toss-up for you, teams. For 10 points, name one of the Catherines besides Catherine of Aragon, who became wives of Henry VIII. Uh, Nisha of Timberlane. Catherine de' Medici. Raymond. We're looking for either Catherine Howard or Catherine Parr. Another 10-point toss-up. In which state was James Whitcomb Riley, the Hoosier poet, born? 
Edward of Raymond. Indiana. Didn't give that away too much, did it? 50, uh, for 10 points is correct. Well, we have all's fear, stars, and longings. All fear, stars, all's or longings. Fair. All's fear it will be. Identify each of the following concerning the word fair. Surname of the Germans who collaborated to publish their fairy tales. Mother Goose and Grimm. Judges? Think about it, Judge. No, we're looking specifically for Grimm. Town in which the League of New Hampshire craftsmen hold their annual fair. Garfield. Durham. Sunapee. Author of Vanity Fair, a novel in which Becky Sharp is the heroine. Pass. William Makepeace Thackeray. Let's go with another 10 point toss up question. Which act did the British Parliament pass in March 1765 to raise funds to help support the British Army stationed in America? Edward of Raymond. The T Act. Timberlane. Peter. Stamp Act. Stamp Act is right for your 10 points. Well, Peter, we'll get over to you and your team now and we'll tell you we have stars, longings, or world leaders. Stars, longings, or world leaders? World leaders. World leaders it will be. Peter, you got everybody up there for five points each. Identify each of the following world leaders. Leader of Yugoslavia from 1945 to 1980. Tito. Tito. Is correct. Emperor of Ethiopia from 1930 to 1974. Pass. It is Haile Selassie and Queen of Great Britain and Ireland from 1837 to 1901. Elizabeth II. It was Victoria. Five out of 15 on their round. All right, whoops, and there's the whistle ending our round, and that'll bring us to the end of the second round with Raymond now holding on to a lead, 175 to 115 after two rounds of play. All right, we'll ask the alternates to move on back, and we'll come up and talk with Peter, Jeremy, Nisha, and Burr as we let them all walk in front and say, you guys didn't really care about that round, did you? <laughs> but we're ready for round number three, right? Mm -hmm. Round number three, 60s. Nice. How'd you do last time? Oh, you got five out of ten, 60 second round of game number one. Yep. Do we do better this time around? I don't know. 60, 60 second rounds can be a make or break round. What do you think about the, the game? Second time a little bit easier, or is, all of a sudden did it get tougher? Yeah, got a little tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, like, didn't like the second round. What about uh, practice? We asked the guys from Raymond. Uh, did you get together at all? We uh, practiced twice a week. Uh, for about a half an hour Very during good. school. Well, we hope it pays off. We've got the 60-second round ready for the big comeback, right? right. It's Definitely. the team from Timberlane Regional. <laughs> well, we'll find out if that big comeback is ready as we do get into that 60-second round. We will be asking each team 10 questions. They get 10 points for every correct answer. And they get a bonus of 10 points if they get all 10 correct in under a minute. So each team will be battling for up to 110 points, and we'll give Timberlane that first choice of categories. The word under, mathematical conversions or explorers. The word under, mathematical conversions or explorers. Word under? Yeah. We'll take the word under. Word under. Peter, again, you can talk to everybody. I take your answer for the team answer. Identify the following compound words, each of which begins with the word under to start the clock. To comprehend. Understand. 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 Correct. Freshman or sophomore in college? Underclassmen. Underclassmen. Correct. Not having opportunities or advantages? Underprivileged. Underprivileged. Correct. In the way? Underfoot. Correct. One expected to lose a contest? Underdog. Underdog. Correct. One whose performance is low compared to his theoretical potential? Pass. Pass. Underperformer. Think about it, judges. A person or a company engaged in the insurance business? Pass. To represent in a deliberately restrained manner. Pass. Hades. Pass. Under Haitians. It was underworld and the solid construction or other supports introduced beneath a wall or building. Under structure. Yeah. Under structure. Think about that, judges, and tell me how many they got. As they, they get five out of ten on their 60 okay. second round. Get a little bit tough there. All right, let's come on over to uh, Raymond. We'll tell you we have mathematical conversions or explorers. 
Explorers. Explorers. All right, you've got everybody up there as well. You can give me your answers. The team answer, identify the following explorers. Start the clock. Viking who colonized Greenland about A.D. 986. Eric the Red. Correct. Norse, who explored Vinland in North America about Leif A.D. Erickson. 1000. Say again. Leif Erikson. Correct. Italian, who sailed the ocean blue in 1492. Columbus. Correct. Frenchman, who founded Quebec in 1608. Cartier. Champlain. Englishman, whose expeditions established a colony on Roanoke Island, Virginia. John Smith. It was Walter Raleigh, English explorer sailing for the Dutch who has a North American river, bay, and strait named for him. Hudson. Correct. Italian who discovered the New York and Narragansett Bays in 1524. Vespucci. It was Verrazano, Spanish explorer of the U.S. Southwest who was looking for the seven cities of Cibola. Cortez. Coronado, French explorer of the Mississippi who named Louisiana in honor of Louis XIV. DeSoto. La Salle, American frontiersman who opened up the Wilderness Road in 1770, and that ends the round. Judges, four out of ten on their 62nd round. Well, that'll bring us to the end of round number three, and those 60-second round questions got a little bit tiff, uh, tougher, but uh, as a result, Raymond holds on to the lead, but not quite as large, 215 to 165 over Timberlane. Raymond, Timberlane, no more talking the rest of the way. Ten-point toss-ups, good luck, here we go. Let's take a look at the monitor here in the studio. What we want you to do is name the Spanish-born Edward of Raymond. Pablo Picasso. Is right, Picasso is right. Sodium explode, explodes violently when mixed with Water. Jeremy of Timberlane. Water. Is right for 10 points. All right, again, if you think you need paper and pencil, you have it in front of you. If Jim is three years older than Ben and the sum of their integral ages is less than 19, what is the oldest Ben can be? Eric of Raymond. Eight. Timberlane. Uh, Burr. Uh, seven. Seven is correct. Seven is right for ten points. All right, we have another ten-pointer for you. In which Alabama city were the Confederate States of America formed in February 1861? Edward of Raymond. Jefferson City. Timberlane. Burr. Montgomery. Is right for another ten points. Here's a ten-pointer for you. What is the most abundant fossil fuel in the United States? Jeremy of Timberlane. Cole. Cole is right for another 10 points for the Owls. All right, we still have three minutes to play, teams. Name the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world which grew Peter of Timberlane. Pyramids. We repeat it all for Raymond. Name the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world which grew in size. No talking. Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Here's another 10-point toss-up. Which polymer frequently used in surgical breast implants is now thought Eric of Raymond? Silicone. Silicone is correct for 10 points. <laughs> Another 10 point for you. Name the best selling author who disowned the movie made Eric of Raymond? Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy of his book, The Patriot Games. <laughs> Very quickly, teams, what is three to the fourth power? Scott of Raymond. 81. 81 is right for your 10 points. All right, just under two minutes to play. Which term meaning eighth part designates the musical interval from middle C, Edward of Raymond? Octet. You can repeat it for Timberlane, I won't, Jeremy. Octave. Octave is correct for your right, uh, for 10 points. Another 10 pointer in which country did the United States provide temporary shelter in 1992 for 2,500 Haitian boat people at the Jeremy of Timberlane? Dominican Republic. You can repeat for Raymond, in which country did the U.S. provide temporary shelter in 1992 for 2,500 Haitian boat people at the Guantanamo Naval Base? Uh, Eric. Cuba. Cuba is right for 10 points. Here we go again, still over a minute to play. Identify the members of an Indian people of central Mexico who had achieved an advanced civilization. Eric of Raymond. Navajo. Can repeat for Timberlane. Identify the members of an Indian people of central Mexico who had achieved an advanced civilization before the conquest of Mexico by uh, Peter. Aztecs. The Aztecs is right for your 10 points. 
All right, just under a minute to play. Which satellite probe originally built to last 21 months marked its 20th year of space in 1992? Uh, Eric of Raymond. The Voyager. Timberlane. It is Pioneer 10. Which 19th century American author postulated that if you build a better mousetrap, the world will be the path to your door? Uh, Edward of Raymond. Emerson. Is right. Ralph Waldo Emerson, to be specific. <laughs> For another 10-pointer, we want you to identify the Canadian province whose name means New Scotland, in honor of the homeland of Scott of Raymond. Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is right. For your 10 points. All right, let's go with another 10-point toss-up. Who was? Never mind. The whistle blows. It'll be Raymond moving on into our quarterfinals. 285 to 225 tonight over Timberlane. Congratulations to Raymond. The Rams will be back for the quarterfinals with a good win. Timberlane, congratulations on your first win in a very good game tonight. Now we have another second round game waiting for you one week from tonight. It will pit the Apaches of Alton High School against the Giants of Bishop Brady High School. That's our game next week. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, everybody. Good night. Major funding for Granite State Challenge was provided by the New Hampshire Lottery, celebrating 30 years and $300 million to education in the Granite State. Additional funding was provided by Public Service of New Hampshire, energy specialists for homes and businesses throughout the state, supporting high quality educational programming for viewers of all ages. Digital Equipment Corporation, where we believe a commitment to education is an investment in the future everyone's future. And Lockheed Sanders, who proudly supports New Hampshire Public Television's educational programs on behalf of its employees and the community.